Definitely not. You will know what uh, moves people. Stomach infrastructure and self-preservation. So <laughs> where, where people, they think, self, but it's most unfortunate. It's actually not a laughing matter. Because ordinarily, everything should be constituency driven. And it's to avoid the cumbersome of going to the people each time to say what is their view or take a referendum mm -hmm. that you have representative. And actually, the legislative arm of the government is a bridge between the government and the people. So you will expect them to be the first buffer in terms of protecting the interests of the people because they are the ones that work with their constituency and know where, where it pinches them and how any particular law will affect them. But does it happen? Because you look at some of the laws that come and you know Nigerians are screaming and saying, why should I pay this? And you now say, have the legislature um, looked at this and think in best interest of their people? The answer would be definitely no. Because it's a resounding no. If they do, they will interrogate some of the laws. They will see the ones that will bring, uh, become burdensome for the government or even the one in oversight that the government also may not be able to implement or that will bring hardship to the people or may even make this law, reauthorization of that law in a few years' time, including also postponing the enforcement in one year time. It's only in Nigeria you see some of the laws, except where it's necessary because of exigency of time. There are certain laws you don't make and say, in two weeks' time, the law is passed today. Mm -hmm. Two weeks, people are to pay this. I mean, it, it shouldn't happen. But this is where we are. And unfortunately, I think the legislative arm, and this is because of undue influence of executive, the executive power, which is so powerful, that they have not, you know, kind of developed, you know, as it, they should be. And we are Nigerians. That's why at times you see they get the heat from Nigerians, because Nigerians are expecting them to really speak on their behalf, to be truly their representative. But I think there is a solution to that. If people, and that's where everything comes back to credible election uh, you know, process, if a legislature is not effective and is not representing you and your interests, then in the next periodic election, you get the person out. The report card will speak for itself. The scorecard will speak for it. There are those who are there. We know, uh, uh, right on a bullpen, like how effective she was there. There is nobody from a plateau state who will not be proud that she effectively represented them. And that's why they keep reaffirming you know, her and, 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 and re-electing her. And you can see even, I knew her, I'm not, it's not from my state, from the work she was doing. And we got involved and she's always accessible, whether as a human rights committee chair, whether as for all the other positions she had held you know within her time as as and that's what it should be uh, but for some people they may not have that you know capacity that even that reach and they will not even want to consult their people and I think first of all they must all have very effective constituency offices and they must go mm -hmm. periodically back to those constituency offices because some of them don't have and they have it in town you can't be in a local representing local <laughs> government and you have your constituency <laughs> office in a city because if you can't go back to those people, then there is a problem. And that's why I think the convergence or there is preponderance of support for even state police. That where you're having also um, huge, powerful voices of gladiators is also amongst political elite. Some will say, oh, if you have it, we can't go back to our state. The governors might just even order us, <laughs> even their deportation or expulsion or, or, or not being able to come. Because, But I think people should not even be afraid of that. You know what? I said we have not been able to use law effectively because if you have a law that stipulates a model, even for that state police, it may, shouldn't be in one fair swoop. There should be benchmarks, you know, guidelines. And any state meeting of these guidelines, then you can have your state police. You must have a law that totally will comply even with the independent of whoever is going to be the state mm -hmm. commission of police. Tenured office work in this way, professionals, recruitment spelled out, you will find that the hands of governors are tied. The funding, how it has to be direct, I mean consolidated without mm -hmm. any once you set that up, hands of governors are tied. And anybody that abuses it, even as a governor, it might be also a distant for waiver of your immunity and calling for hmm. action the, for federal right. interference. So we can, we haven't to used okay. innovative to. ways and our laws to tighten this. Put me on that draft committee. Just, just I would draft a law that no state governor will violate and get away no, with it. We, we, as far as state police is we, concerned. We seem to have